Hi everybody. Today we're kicking off a brand new multi-part series on building looks. What do I mean when I refer to a look? A look is the consistent visual signature of a piece of content crafted in post. Looks aren't about individual shots, they're about all the shots and the way they marry together into a cohesive whole. Now today we're going to start off by talking about the foundation of any look, which is the contrast curve, specifically the black point, the knee, the shoulder, and the white point. Now, if you don't know what all those terms mean, don't worry, because we're going to cover each of them in detail and get a good look at how they affect our images and our overall look. Let's dive in. So let's get right into the foundation of building any look, and that's our contrast curve. So you can see I've got a sequence of five shots here pulled into DaVinci Resolve, and right now I've got no grading whatsoever going on on these images. The only thing I have going on is a simple technical mapping from my wide gamut, wide dynamic range camera color space into a smaller dynamic range display color space. So while I can now see these images properly on my display, they certainly have no character, they're lacking in contrast, and we've got a lot further to go before I'm ready to say that this grade looks great. The first thing I want to do in that process before I begin to address things that I love or things that I'm concerned about in individual shots is I want to begin to build my look and I want to start with my foundation of building a contrast curve. Now, because I want to build a contrast curve that's going to live over top of all of these shots rather than an individual shot, I actually don't want to do my work here at the clip level. I want to go over to my timeline level so that I can make an adjustment that is going to affect all of my shots at the same point and in the same way. And you can see here in my timeline grade, I already have one other node going on. This is my final output node that's transforming me into my display color space, as I mentioned a moment ago. Now, the look that I'm going to build, I want this whole look to take place just upstream of, just to the left of this final output transform to my Rec. 709 display. So I'm going to create an empty node just to the left of this final output, and I'm going to go down here to my custom curves, which is where I'm going to be doing all of my look building for this video. So the first thing we want to look at when we're starting to build our look, to build our contrast curve, is we're going to talk about the knee. The knee is the bottom of the image. It's not the very zero point of the image, but it's toward the bottom, and I want to create more contrast, more density in this tonal region of this image. So to do that, I'm going to pick a control point somewhere around here, and I'm going to start to drive it down toward the floor, and you're going to see my image darken as I do that. This isn't going to make full sense or look quite right until I complement it with the other side of this adjustment, which is a shoulder adjustment up toward the top of the signal container. So let's say that's a good starting point there. And now let's draw a second control point and begin to push our shoulder a little bit hotter, like so. And now you can see things are really starting to come to life. And I've got some nice contrast beginning to come into not only this image, but all of my images as I flip through here. And as I turn that node on and off, you can see the impact that it's having on each of these images in turn. And this is really part of the art of building a good look is allowing yourself to be nimble enough to move between shots and evaluate the way your decisions are affecting not just a single shot or a group of shots, but all of the shots or a subset of hero shots you've selected for your overall piece so that you can establish a look that's really serving the majority of your shots uh, in a positive way and giving you a foundation on top of which you can make individualized grading decisions uh, with success. So that's a good starting point for my knee and for my shoulder. The next thing I want to look at in terms of drawing our initial contrast curve is the way I'm setting my black point and my white point. And let's start by talking about the black point. So the black point by default in Resolve is always going to give me the option of running all the way to zero. This doesn't mean that all shadows in all images will automatically reach zero, but it does mean that if I drive the right knob far enough, there will be nothing preventing me from hitting zero and even from going out below zero and getting clipping in the bottom end of the image. So one thing that I like to do to ensure against that and to create a nice soft container that I never spill outside of is to set my black point slightly above zero. This is sometimes called a print black versus a zero black. And I can control this with this bottom most control point right here by grabbing it and pushing it up slightly. And you can see that being reflected in my histogram here in this region. It's uh, setting the point below which I am not admitting shadows to drop. 
So by going somewhere around here, I'm able to create a bit more of a sense of depth to the image and uh, prevent and kind of ensure against uh, clipping in individual shots, even where I do have deep, thick, dark uh, areas of shadow, I'm never actually going to fully reach zero. And because I'm never going to fully reach zero, I'm never going to spill out below zero and get clipping, which always takes your viewer out of the image, either consciously or subconsciously. So that's a great thing to remember and think about whenever you're setting a look, where do you want your black point to live? There's nothing wrong with setting it at zero, but you can also put it anywhere else that you like to uh, create a different overall texture and, and, and aesthetic in your global look that you are establishing for your project. Same notion applies up here at my white point. Now, in my case, because I'm in a color managed workflow and I am transforming things downstream from this wide dynamic range log environment that I'm working in to a much smaller dynamic range gamma environment that works for my display, I'm effectively already mapping my white point down with that transformation in a technical context. So there's not much that I need to do here, nor am I going to see a ton of adjustment because that's already happening uh, in another spot in my processing pipeline. But again, I would say the same thing, depending on how you're working and depending on your project, this may be another creative tool for you to play with defining and defining in perhaps a non-traditional or non-defaulted way where, no, I don't want my hip, my whites to hit pure uh, 100. I want them to stall out just below that point. And again, allow me to contain my overall dynamic range of my signal within my container and ensure that nothing ever spills out of it from the top or the bottom. So let's have a look at what our freshly built contrast curve looks like on each of these images. And for example, I flipped here to this first image and I feel like I, in this case, want to now open up my knee a little bit like so. So the contrast curve is something that you're going to set initially and then probably continue to finesse and refine throughout the uh, rest of your grading process. But it's great to start with a baseline of common contrast, of contrast that hits all of your shots in the same way before you begin to make your individualized adjustments. This is something that's going to begin to already unify your images, give you a consistent look before you even start your individualized grading. And it's a really powerful tool in that way. We're going to continue talking about other aspects of this look that we're creating in our next video. But for now, we've got a nice contrast curve drawn and we're ready to go on to our next step. We've now got a great foundation in place for building looks. Setting your contrast curve should always be your first step in this process because it's going to have a huge influence on everything that you do afterward. Now, if you're a busy content creator or independent filmmaker or post-professional, you may not have time on every project to build a look from scratch like we're doing today. For these scenarios, I've developed Coloid, a set of DaVinci Resolve plugins which allows you to quickly develop custom filmic looks without the hit or miss black box quality that you get from a LUT. Everything is fully adjustable and fully under your control. If you'd like to learn more and pick up a free 24 hour trial, check out the link above, which I'm also gonna leave in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out part two, where we're gonna start refining this contrast curve to create depth and harmony. See you then.